What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today we're going to be talking about the data mine patch, which I know you guys are probably going to be hyped after I share all of this information with you. But first, before we get into that, I want to send a special shout out to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. This video is brought to you by Epic Games. And before we get into the main content, we're just going to be showcasing a little bit of Battle Breakers. So the game you guys are seeing in front of you right now is Battle Breakers brought to us by Epic Games. It was dropped in the App Store today. And if you guys are interested in trying this game, make sure you guys click the link in the description below. Battle Breakers is a cartoon inspired hero collector RPG built as a passion project by a small team at Epic Games. Monsters from space trap the world's greatest heroes in a techno magic crystal. Now it's up to you to assemble the ultimate team of super warriors and take back your planet one break at a time. Keep in mind that Battle Breakers is available on PC and mobile. Explore over a thousand dungeons across volcanoes, forests, glaciers, and more. You got big bosses, epic brawls. You can unleash massive attacks and special abilities to take down bosses and smash through legions of monsters. So with that, you can assemble the perfect team with the Battle Pass, the Skybreaker Quest, and the Hero Store. You have the power to build any team that you want from hundreds of heroes. Again, Battle Breakers is a free-to-play game that's available on PC, iOS, and Android. And make sure you guys use my link below in the description to download Battle Breakers yourself. Also, make sure you guys use my supporter creator code to help support my channel as well. And again, special shout out to Epic Games for sponsoring this video. Now, as we get into the data mine, guys, things are about to get a little crazy. So just a little disclaimer here. Data mines are always prone to changing. Don't get mad at people data mining because stuff has changed when the hero is released, man. So listen, listen, guys. All right. If y'all yelling at the data miners, don't yell at the data miners, man. These dudes is putting in work so we can get, you know, the information that we need. So regarding Lydica S2, um, there's kind of like a weird thing in her S2. It says that the skill can't dual attack, but... That's just how it displays, and you guys will see that here in a second, so don't worry your little hearts about that. Uh, just a little disclaimer here, too, as well. Basar's side story is coming up, so Basar is going to be the banner, probably after Melissa is over. So, for those of you guys who have been dramatically underestimating Basar, or just haven't been dealing with it because he's just everywhere in Legend right now, or in the high champ, you guys are going to see this dude everywhere. And I told y'all this when they buffed Basar before, but now it's it's about to be for real. Okay, it's literally about to be for real. So I hope you guys are ready for this. But with that, I think that no surprise will come out with a super duper hard counter. Um, also, it makes sense that they knew Basar was coming out. Hence why all these fire heroes have been coming out over and over and over and over again. Also, uh, there's a new Moonlight pack coming out. As you guys know, we can check that out right here. Bing, bang, boom. Doesn't really look too new. I think the only thing about it is that you could just buy two of them now instead of just one. So, use your own discretion. What are you guys going to do with that? That's going to be entirely up to you. All right. So, as we roll down, move a little bit further down. Kawana's already coming out. It's going to be at the end of the patch. As you guys know, the patch got delayed. Um, as soon as we get some information on her abilities um you know well not her abilities but as soon as we're actually able to test her in game uh, i'll put a video out and you guys can see that as well uh, we weren't able to get the full skill animation but you guys can see a little snippet of that here but as soon as like i said we get you know our hands on her or if we can pull her or something get lucky then i'll build her a six star and then we'll talk numbers and positioning and what you could do with Kiwana, so you guys can expect a video coming out on that as well. Um, now, I know a lot of you guys are super duper hyped for Pavel. Pavel is finally coming. He's got skill icons here and his S3 animation, so we'll look at both of those here now. Uh, we just unfortunately don't know what his abilities do yet, but he is absolutely in the game. So he'll probably come next week with Basar Side Story, right? Or sometime. Hopefully. Hopefully. So now his Zodiac is a Ram, so I'm assuming Taurus. <laughs> He's a Taurus, you know what I mean? Stubborn. Long walks on the beach and all that. And he's serious. Cool-headed, loyal. Now, we don't know what his skills are going to be yet. But it looks like uh, hey, we do know his multipliers. So attack rate 1 and 1. S3 1 and 1. And then S1 is 1.2 and 1. But again, that's tentative and definitely is subject to change. Now, with Faithless Lydica coming, she's going to be here in two weeks. So if you guys are interested in her kit. Now, even though I'm just saying this up front on paper, it looks like her kit is super niche. Uh, otherwise like i feel like there definitely is a use for her but she's gonna have to be positioned in very specific ways all right so i'm just letting you guys know that ahead of time 
But she is a five-star ranger, and she's light version, and she's a Gemini because I know how excited you guys are about farming Twisted Nerves. Woo! So if you guys are looking for this hero, just make sure you guys pay attention to this because her, her kid is actually pretty interesting. So let's look at a few images here. This is a face of her with that smug look like she doesn't care. Uh, these are her skill animation icons, and then also we have her S3 animation partial here. So there's that. Now, when we get into it, her story is after being taken into a cult after a young age and enduring a childhood of suffering, Faithless Lydica finally managed to escape and is now on the run. Naturally, this experience has given her a skepticism towards religion and hatred of fanatics. So her gash line is, who am I? Hmm. You're better off not knowing. Boom. Jump shot. Okay. So she got some camping lines here that you guys can see. We don't know who her VA is yet. We can find that out later. Her personalities are individualistic and traumatized. So she's scarred, but she's an individualist. All right. Camping topics are sad memory and reality check. And then these are her base stats here with a speed of 114. So she's not as fast as regular Lydica, but she still is fast nonetheless, which makes it easier for her positioning. And when like looking at her abilities, I don't really think that she's meant to be positioned first anyway, although she could be. All right. So these are some of her camping values. We're just going to skip on right through that and get right into the skill one. So with her skill one, she attacks with the sword, 60% chance to decrease hit chance, which is cool. Skill two is where things get interesting. So with the skill, she binds all enemies with her sword with up to 100% chance to dispel one buff, increasing combat readiness of the caster by 25% per target and all other allies by 5% per target. This skill cannot trigger a dual attack. It cannot. No dual attack. Now, the cooldown is four turns. Soul gain is one. And then these are the uh, upgrades for the actual skill itself. Now, here's the kicker with this. And this is why I said I don't think that she should be positioned first. Like, I still feel like maybe like a Basar or some some other kind of like Harado or something should go in front. And then, let's say like a Tywin. And then you can use her kind of as a dual purpose. So, what I mean by that is you can use that S2 for the Dispel. Even though, even though if you're using Basar, the buffs are going to be gone. But the CR push of the caster will basically give her an extra turn. With that 100% CR push, you'll grant her an extra turn, essentially. And then with that S3, then she can nuke a target, especially if you have the defense break applied. Plus the fact that she's going to increase the combat readiness of the rest of the team, depending on how many targets. So if you're in arena, regular arena, four targets means that she'll basically get an extra turn with 100% CR. And then also grant 20% CR to the rest of your team. If you're in Guild Wars, 75% for herself and 15% for your allies. So this could be a nice way. And if you guys are speed tuning to run a, a, another nuker or AoE like a BBK after her, uh, this is uh, where you're going to have to really pay attention to the speed of your team to make sure this works. Uh, once she comes out and we pull her, you know, we'll do more testing. But again, because of her positioning, I still think she's going to be super niche. Just mainly because even with the Dispel 1 buff, I mean, if you're up against Fallen CC, which a lot of times you possibly can be, um, and let's say the team happens to be on immunity, it's still going to kind of be a toss-up. Kind of like the same reason that Balance is in, kind of phased out when they nerfed his, his buff strip thing. This is something you guys want to pay attention to as well. So when we get into her S3, I mentioned you can nuke here because she ignores effect resistance. And even if you don't nuke, she increases her school skill cooldown to max. So if any enemy has an ability you don't want them to use, you just S3 into them. Even if the death break isn't there and you can reset their cooldowns, which could be incredibly useful with the ignore effect resistance against, let's say, Ruels or Fallen CCs. Or pretty much anything that you don't want them to use a primary ability and you can kind of line that up in order to position your team in a more beneficial way so that's something that you guys want to look at as well now the multiplier on her s3 is decent at 1.4 with the power of 9.5 so i feel like she can deal some damage especially with some pretty decent base stats however her s2 i don't think is positioned for damage at all because if you look at the power it's one the attack rate is 0.7 so she's not really going to be doing damage here S2 is all about maybe a little tiny bit of damage, but it's more about the positioning and how you're going to set up the rest of your team after she combos. So that's something you guys want to look at. Now, also, I want you guys to be aware that even though she increases her combat readiness by 100%, um, let's say in an arena combat situation, you still want to be careful because even though it is possible to lap Arbiter Vildred even after revive, if you make your CR, if your, your combat readiness, you know, high enough, right? Um, even though that is the case, this is not an extra turn. 
What this is is just a CR boost, and if your CR is high enough because there's a little bit of spillover, then she'll go again. If it's not, you'll still get cut in front of, and you still could die. So again, err on the side of caution when fighting Arbiter Vildra comps. Try to set it up to where if you do S2, you're not going to kill Avil, but then you can maybe nuke with S3 on another target, and then with that CR push, make sure that your team is speed tuned, so your fourth hero, your BBK, your JK, say whoever it's going to be, uh, is then positioned in a way that's going to allow them to finish up. You know, get the double turn, kill that AV, um, you know, whatever, what have you. Now, granted, as this hero comes out, there's going to be a lot of different ways. A lot of people come with different ideas and combos to use this particular hero. But like I said, I feel like her kit is still kind of niche. And I'm actually really, really surprised that Emma Lytica was the one that they decided to go with this time instead of like Tywin or Crow or something like that. But anyway, guys, um, that's all I wanted to cover today. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns about any anything in the data mine, definitely let me know in the comment box below. Also, what are you guys most excited about? Any of this information? Is, is something in here standing out to you guys that really make you like, yo, we got to get there, we got to get there? Uh, let me know that in the comment box as well. And as always, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video. And we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.